want to start by saying thank you, thank you, thank you to Tamara for setting this up and hosting this call. Um, Absolutely. She's, she's amazing. She's wonderful. And I just, we so appreciate her um, doing this and making this available to all of us. So we're ready to learn. I'm going to let Tamara introduce you and um, take it from here. Okay. Well, thank you again, Joe. I met with Joe. Uh, my husband and I have known Joe for about two, maybe three years now um, from doing taxes in the past with him. Um, and it was just this past year that I was finally like, you know, I don't know if this is going to, like, I don't know what to do. And Joe was like, oh, MLM, Beachbody. I, I actually, I'm familiar with this. So, um, so Joe has a background in MLM. He did tax consultations and trainings on the corporate side um, in the early 2000s. And so he's actually been kind of very familiar with this for the past decade, over the past decade. Um, his kids are also coaches. So Joe is also drinking Shakeology, um, which I just thought was, it was just kind of crazy, such a, a kind of all cir circles back around. So I'm just so thankful for you to be here and to help us out um, and teach us a little bit of things that can help our businesses so that we make sure we take you know, good care this year with our taxes and then good care in keeping records for the future. Sure. Great. All right. Well, thank you for inviting me to the call. And, um, I have, uh, I told Tamara when we talked earlier that I've probably given this speech a thousand times. So, so, you know, if anybody, um, has questions, just, just ask, um, I'm happy to, make this interactive, but um, the, the great thing about having a home-based business is that you can um, take tax deductions for things that without a home-based business, you're not eligible to claim. Without a home-based business, there's about 15 to 20 deductions, you know, things like mortgage interest, property taxes, charitable contributions, stuff like that, and that's it. Um, with a home-based business, there's literally hundreds of things that are partly or completely tax deductible that because you have a home-based business, you're able to take a deduction for. And so by taking things that previously you could not deduct, but now you can deduct, then obviously that's going to lower your taxes without spending any new money. So other than the cost of other than the cost of joining the program and staying in the program, that's really all that extra you're going to spend. Um, so in virtually every case, I can show somebody how what they're going to save on taxes is going to exceed the cost to join and the cost to stay in it for all 12 months of the year. Um, so and for folks that have taxes taken out of their paychecks if they work a regular job and they have some form of withholding either from their job or from some retirement or pension income, you can adjust that withholding because we know our taxes are going to go down, so why continue to have the same amount withheld? So you can adjust their withholding so that they get essentially a, a increase in their take-home pay every pay period, it'll give them the cash flow to pay the expenses. So, I mean, it's a way to overcome the money objection. Um, and, you know, so many of the things that we do on a daily basis, uh, we integrate with our business, and that's what creates these, these brand-new tax deductions. So... So let me, let me first address a couple of things that the IRS is, is concerned about. First of all, you have to have a uh, activity with an intent to make a profit. And over the years, the IRS has come up with nine criteria they use to determine if a person has a business with an intent to make a profit. And these things are best... Uh, characterized as, uh, you know, being able to show that there's a trend towards profitability, being able to document your, your efforts that you spend to make the money. For somebody that just simply signs up and never does anything, they're not in the IRS's eyes a business. 
Um, so you got to actually be doing something. You don't necessarily have to make a profit. You just have to demonstrate to them that you're trying to make a profit. So record keeping is key in all in all aspects of the taxes. Um, not only do you need to document your expenses, but you need to document your efforts to try to make the profit. Um, so we'll we'll talk a little bit about records in a minute. Um, but that's the first hurdle you got to join. You got to overcome, and then the second hurdle with the IRS is you have to be able to demonstrate that the expenses you claimed were what they call ordinary and necessary expenses to the business. Um, so, you know, one huge question that I get all the time is, well, you know, as a as a coach, I'm required to spend a certain amount each month to maintain my ability to receive income. Uh, um, and so, yes, to the extent that you have required minimum purchases, even though you may consume those purchases, um, those are tax deductible. Um, and I think Beachbody is, is a little unique from this standpoint that for the people that are you know, coaches, which I'm assuming all of y'all are coaches, you know, um, but the people that are coaches, you know, I could even see how you might be able to claim gym memberships, um, you know, things that you spend on your, your health because, you know, in network marketing so many times you got to be a product of the product and you got to walk the walk and talk the talk. And so to be successful, you know, you want to be able to say, well, hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm doing the things that I'm teaching my, my coaches and my customers to do. Um, so I, I think you could, could probably justify claiming those types of deductions as well. So those are some, some unique expenses that applies to the industry and to your company in particular. Uh, but then there's just ordinary expenses that we incur every day, cell phone, internet, you know, car expenses, um, home office expenses, uh, travel. Um, and I'm going to go over a few of these just to give you a flavor for, for how, how much this can add up to. But all of those things are, you know, potential tax deductions. Um, so, so let's start with cell phones. And I mentioned it first. Pretty much the IRS, without any questions, my experience has been they'll give you 75% of your cell phone use, no questions asked. Um, you know, if you want to claim higher than 75%, then, you know, you probably need to be prepared to defend that uh, if you got audited. Internet service, you know, some reasonable allocation of what you pay for internet. That's a tax write-off. Um, mileage to and from meetings and uh, events and, uh, you know, meetings with prospects or customers or your downline coaches, um, you know, all of that is tax deductible. And, and the great thing about this business and this industry is that you can work all these things into your daily living. You know, that's what everybody does. I mean, whenever you go somewhere, chances are you're also promoting your business. Um, so being able to document that is important. Um, so let's, let's, let's talk about car expenses here for a minute. Right now you can write off, I think it's, it changes every year, but I think it's like 56 cents a mile. Um, and so, you know, if you drove 10,000 miles a year that we were able to justify as being business miles, that's a $5,600 deduction. And in most people's tax bracket, that's going to save them about $2,000 a year in taxes. Um, so that's huge, you know, I mean, that's huge. Um, just, just that one item alone, um, Another um, thing is home office. You know, this, this allows you to write off a percentage of your utilities, your insurance, your rent if you rent, 
your interest in taxes if you own um, all of the business expense, maintenance, repairs, things like that. Uh, that's typically measured on square footage. Um, so, and it's whatever area that you use uh, for the conduct of the business. So it can be an entire room, it can be a part of a room, it can be more than one room, just whatever area that they, they want you to use it exclusively for business. So, uh, um, so it could just be like a corner of a room. Um, but that that works. Um, if you travel out of town on business for an overnight stay, there are specific rules on how you can write off your transportation costs, your lodging costs, your meals and incidentals. Um, so you can turn, you know, some what otherwise might be considered vacation time into into tax deduction, so long as you're also work in the business and and if you try to do that kind of stuff you need to keep a diary or some record of you know the contacts that you made and just just evidence that you know I was talking to people there's no really requirement to to recruit anybody as a customer or a coach but you do want to have some evidence that you were were talking to people of course if you're going to a company-sponsored training or event or a, maybe a group-sponsored event, uh, that's obviously tax-deductible. Um, so that, um, you know, furniture and office equipment that you use to conduct the business, you may have owned the stuff for years and never, ever taken a tax deduction for it. Well, guess what? When you start using it for your business, then you can take a tax deduction for it, even though you may have paid for it years ago. And the way that works is you claim what's called a depreciation deduction. And computers are depreciated over five years, furniture is over seven years, and you just take what the value of those items is when you started using them, not necessarily what you paid for them originally, but what they're worth now, um, as long as it didn't go up in value, which that stuff usually goes down in value, but you take that number and you divide it by five or seven and you take that each year. So that's a tax deduction that doesn't even require you to spend money. <laughs> so, I mean, how, how cool is that? Um, so now let's talk about a few special record keeping rules. Um, you always need to be able to prove that uh, you spent the money um, that it was paid and what it was for in the event you get audited. Um, and if you have something like a purchase at Walmart or somewhere where, um, you know, you could have literally spent money on anything, you got to be able to prove, you need to save the receipts. You need to show, well, at Walmart I bought um, office supplies or whatever, you know, you, you need to show what that's for. Um, for, tr for mileage, you got to have four things. You got to have the date, the destination, the number of miles, and the business purpose. Date, destination, number of miles, and business purpose. Um, and those will substantiate your mileage deduction. There's a special rule on meals. Um, meals are 50% deductible unless it's some type of banquet style meal where everybody eats the same thing or you are people bringing people into your home and you're buying stuff at the grocery. That's 100% deductible. But just if you go out to a restaurant to meet a um, customer or a prospect, uh, or a downline, then uh, that's 50% deductible. And the rule on, on meal documentation is you really need to save the little restaurant receipts. Um, even if you pay for it with a debit card or credit card, you still need to save the ticket because there's a rule that says that within 24 hours of the meal, you need to write down four things, the date, the amount, those two things are already on the receipt. 
So you just take the receipt and you write these next two things on it. Who, who ate and what the business purpose was. So you take the receipt and you write who ate and what the business purpose was, and you save that restaurant ticket, and that's what you that's what you need in the event of an audit. Um, so walking into an audit <clears throat> with 12 months of bank statements showing your debit card charges or 12 months of credit card bills showing your credit card charges won't satisfy the 24-hour rule. So for that reason, you've got to um, you got to save the little tickets. Now there are programs out there like TaxBot, My Tax Buddy, um, Certified Tax Advantage. There's about four or five of these programs that'll track your mileage, track your receipts, um, track all your expenses. Those are great programs, inexpensive programs. Um, the one that I use and I'm most familiar with is TaxBot. So, you know, those are great tools that you can, can use. Um, so I would recommend that because um, that, that tracks the stuff that you need to track to meet the, to be compliant with the IRS. Another thing you can do is you can hire your family members to work for your business. So you can hire your spouse as well as your children there's a few rules you need to be aware of. Um, if, if by hiring your spouse, that allows you to set up what's called a medical reimbursement plan. And this is an employee benefit that you offer to your employees, who is your spouse. Your employee's spouse, which is you, um, and your, your employees' dependents, which is, generally speaking, your children. So you can get all of the uh, out-of-pocket medical expenses covered as a 100% tax write-off, uh, whereas typically, for most people, you got to have more than 10% of your income in medical expenses before it starts saving you any taxes. Here it's the first dollar of medical expenses, now, you do have to put the spouse on payroll, and you do have to pay FICA and Medicare taxes and give them a W-2 and file some reports. So, I mean, you need to have enough medical expenses to justify the paperwork, but what you can pay your spouse can be fairly nominal. I mean, you could pay your spouse maybe, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month or something. Uh, you actually need to write them a payroll check and all that stuff. And if this is anything that you're interested in hearing more about, you know, I'm going to give you my contact information at the end. Uh, but but this is, you know, these are just ideas that might save you money. Now, you can hire your kids. Kids have to be more than six years old, which I used to think meant seven, <laughs> but it actually doesn't. It actually means more than six. It can be six years in a day. Uh, that's what the law says. And uh, it works best if they're under 18, because if they're under 18, there's no fight in Medicare. If they're under 21, there's no federal or state unemployment taxes to pay on them. You don't have to pay workers' comp. They can exclude themselves. Uh, if they make less than it's roughly $6,000 total income, then there's no federal or state income taxes on it. So you could conceivably have a $6,000 deduction for paying your child where the child, if they're under 18, would owe no taxes on it, zero taxes on it, but yet you're getting a $6,000 deduction. If they're under 18, you can deposit that money into a bank account for them. Uh, and of course, if they're under 18, you've got to be on the signature card. So you're still in control of how that money's spent, but it's a way for you to tax deduct some of the expenses for your children. Now they need to perform legitimate work and you need to have some method to document that. Uh, but I mean, gosh, that's a great, I mean, my children, I have three, and 
at the time that they were all under 18, I was doing $18,000 a year tax deductible, tax free to them. So, so I mean, that, that can really add up. Um, that's a terrific deduction. Um, another thing is, um, vacations. I, I want to touch on that again. Um, if you travel out of town, uh, for business, uh, if the primary purpose of the trip is business, then you get to write off the transportation expenses to and from. And then the days that are considered business days, you get to write off the lodging, meals, and incidental expenses. Um, and so the question then becomes, what's a business day? Well, a business day is a travel day, and it's any day that you spend four hours or more working your business. So again, documentation is key. If you go to some event, save the itinerary from the event. In the case you're audited, then you can demonstrate that, hey, I spent, you know, eight hours in a training session this day, so it's definitely business. Um, and that, on those days, you can write off everything. So, so that's important. Um, so, so let's go back to the overcoming the money objection. I view these, these tax deductions for people that pass the, the profit motive tests. Um, you know, their, these tax deductions are great things you can use to recruit people to overcome the, the money objection. And what's even better is retention. If you've got somebody that's already in and they've adjusted their paycheck um, so that they're getting an extra, you know, let's say $400 a month take home pay, that's probably going to be an average. Um, they're, they're in. I mean, they're, they're not going anywhere. Um, so it's a great, it's, it's a good, it's a good recruiting tool, but it's a fantastic retention tool. Um, and so there are, uh, easy ways to present this. Um, I was the co-author of a book that is now entitled Home Business Tax Savings Made Easy. Uh, it's currently in its eighth edition and this book is uh, authored by a gentleman named Ron Mueller, um, and I was the co-author of the third and fourth editions of this book, um, but he sells this book on his website, which is homebusinesstaxsavings.com. I think the cost is somewhere between $35 and $40, and he's got some other neat little, you know, little tools on the website for sale. He's got a, a packet of 25 brochures that you can pass out to people. It's real cheap that explains how the tax deductions will benefit them and their business. Um, so you might want to check that out. Homebusinesstaxsavings.com um, has some tools that you can use this. Now, um, as far as... Uh, contacting me and my firm. Uh, we, we've got clients in all 50 states. Um, so uh, I'm based in Indiana, uh, but we can help you from anywhere. Um, my email address is joe at joe craft, which is C-R-A-F-T C-P-A dot com. Joe at joe craft C-P-A dot com. And the phone number is 812-641-0477, 812-641-0477. And we offer a free three-year tax review. And what this is, is if you've been in network marketing for a while, and maybe you're hearing about some things for the first time that you wished you'd deducted before but didn't, you can send to me your last three years returns, which right now is 12, 13, and 14. Uh, 12 is about ready to expire, April 15th, 
we won't be able to amend 2012 any longer. But what I'll do is I'll go over it, talk to you about it, um, see if there's any opportunity to go back and amend the return to get some money back, maybe some things you didn't claim. Um, worst case scenario, let's say there's nothing to amend, but it would at least give us an opportunity to have a discussion about future uh, planning techniques um, and all that's uh, free of charge. What, what we get out of it, this is just the opportunity to maybe get a new customer because um, we prepare taxes obviously for people that are in this industry, uh, people starting out as well as people that are very, very successful. And, uh, you know, we'd be glad to uh, to chat with you about that. Um, all you need to do is just call that number or send an email to that email and, um, you know, we'll, we'll move forward with it. So I, I can take some questions if you got any or um, Tamara, if there's anything that you want me to cover that I haven't covered. Um, um, I know I will send everybody that same link that you sent us about travel because it covered a little bit more in depth, even like the weekend extension. So I'm, I'm going to make sure I send okay. that to everybody. Um, sure. I did, I did have a question um, that, and it only just because somebody had mentioned it this week. Um, I had somebody okay. that was going to sign up for the discount of Shakeology being in terms of okay. discount coach. Um, and then she said, right. oh, wait, I don't know about this because taxes. And I was kind of confused because she wouldn't have to do anything with taxes if she legitimately did not use this to sell, correct? If she just used correct. it correct. to get a discount. Yeah, that's, that's correct. So, so the only time you claim this as a business is if you're if you're a coach, if you're trying to make money with it, mm -hmm. if all you're doing is just a customer and you're consuming the products, then you're not going to be eligible for these tax deductions. Okay. All right. Any other questions, guys? There. Hey, hey, this is Brian. Hey, uh, Joe, I love uh, using using uh, the tax savings as a retention tool. I I never heard of that. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Um, yeah. Do I, I have two uh, specific questions? Um, and this is great timing for us because we're actually looking for a for a new accountant. Uh, my wife's been doing this for about five years, and um, so you know we we definitely need to do go back and review. Um, do you work? I, I kind of checked out your website. Do you work uh, only with QuickBooks, or do you use like the the Zero software? Oh no. Yeah, we we. I, I use zero. I, I mean, yeah, any any pro peach tree, any any program you okay, want to use, no no problem. So awesome. Um, we are we're kind of income wise. We're at the point where we've been advised to um, set up an S corp. Uh, we live in Louisiana, yeah. but we're not sure if that's actually going to benefit us here. Is that something that that you guys could do? Is yeah yeah yeah. yeah. It, it generally the answer is yes, but. But if you're wanting to take advantage of the three-year tax review, then why don't we just wait and discuss all of those okay. subjects, you know, after I've had a chance to look at your return. Sure. Because by seeing your return, I'm going to have a better feel for okay. what it may, how it may benefit you. Okay. Sounds great. Well, we'll definitely be in touch. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Am I unmuted? You're good, Terry. Okay. Hey, thank you, Joe, for giving us this information. I just want to make sure you did say that we could write off the Shakeology that we drink and everything we buy. Yeah. To to the extent to to the extent that it's a minimum required purchase to be eligible for the compensation. Uh, another question. I have two daughters that live with me and I actually pay for their Shakeology because they're 18 and okay. 20 in school. Okay. And I write theirs off on my taxes. Okay. Well, um, is by you paying for theirs, mm -hmm. is that is somehow qualifying you for a higher rank or an additional income or anything like that? Do, I didn't understand the question. I'm sorry. Okay. By, by paying for theirs, is that in any way 
basically increasing. Uh, are they are they coaches or are they customers? Coaches. They're coaches. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to be eligible to receive part of their volume as compensation. Um, yeah. So if you, I mean, you know, I guess it's going to kind of depend on how well they're doing. <laughs> you know, if if they're doing pretty well, then absolutely, because you brought them in, they're, you're making money off of their volume. Um, so, and without them having a minimum required purchase, then they're not going to be eligible. But now if they're not really doing anything with the business, it might be harder to argue that point. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, they're they're working at it. One's in the twelfth grade, and one is a first year in college. And they are actually mm-hmm. one of them has a coach under her, about to get her second one. Right. And the other one is working on some people too. So they're they're working at it. They're doing it. Okay, so you know that that um, that that would be something in an audit that they, we might get some pushback from the IRS on. But I mean, I would be. I would be willing to to argue the point, you know. I mean, I can't guarantee the outcome, but I certainly think you've got a basis for doing so. Um, okay. Thank you so much. Okay, sure. All right. Well, anybody else? I have one question. How do we write off personal development or any training expenses that we want? Yeah, you can do that if you if you can take the position that that um, enhances your business. Then any kind of continuing education or personal development expenses are going to be deductible. But it, you know, you need to somehow tie it to, you know, I'm taking this because I think it's going to help me make more money. I mean, that's that's what the IRS is going to want to hear if you get audited. For sure. So you just need to think through what your arguments would be. And I mean, I can help you think through those arguments, but but that would be the approach is you would have to defend it on the basis that it somehow enhanced your business. Awesome. Very good. Got it. Thank you so much. Okay. Sure. Wow. Well, I, I think, does anybody else have any other questions? Okay. Well, y'all, if y'all think of other questions, you can call or email, and I'll be glad to talk to any of y'all individually. Um, but I thank you for the opportunity to, to share this with you. Thank you. Yes, you. Thank, you. thank you so much. We appreciate you. All right. Okay, y'all have a great evening. You thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Tamara, again. Okay. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Thanks, guys. We'll stop the recording. And oh, and those of you that qualify for Jensen.